السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times Welcome to lesson number 9 of Mishkat al-Masabih Alhamdulillah, in our last lesson we covered hadith number 19 uh, all the way up to hadith number 25 so inshallah today we're going to begin with hadith number 26 قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى وعن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه ثوب أبيض وهو نائم ثم أتيته وقد استيقظ فقال ما من عبد قال لا إله إلا الله ثم مات على ذلك إلا دخل الجنة قلت وإن زنى وإن سرق قال وإن زنى وإن سرق قلت وإن زنى وإن سرق قال وإن زنى وإن سرق قلت وإن زنى وإن سرق قال وإن زنى وإن سرق على رغم أنف أبي ذر وكان أبو ذر رضي الله عنه إذا حدث بهذا قال وإن رغب أنف أبي ذر متفق عليه from Abi Dhar radiyallahu anhu said, I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was sleeping and he was wearing a white garment. I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa na'imun while he was sleeping wa alayhi thawbun abiyadu and he was wearing a white garment. Thumma ataytuhu wa qad istayqala and then I came to him again and he had woken up. So Abu Dhar radiallahu an, initially when he went to go see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he found him sleeping. So he went back and then he came back again and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had woken up. فقال, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, ما من عبد قال, There is no slave who says, لا إله إلا الله. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. ثم مات على ذلك. And then they pass away upon that. There is no slave who declares the testimony of faith, who professes the kanima after having iman in their heart. And then they pass away upon that. Except that they will enter paradise. The key to entering into paradise is iman, is belief in Allah. And his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all of the other articles of faith. Now, some of the scholars they mention that there's different levels of iman. There's different degrees of iman, and there's two primary degrees. There's something known as al imanul munji min al dukhuli fi nar, and al imanul munji min al khuludi fi nar. There is iman that saves a person from entering into the fire and that is the highest level of Iman that is when a person has Iman in their heart and it expresses itself through their speech and behavior and they try their best to fulfill the commandments of Allah stay away from His prohibitions they might make some mistakes here and there but they're people of repentance and seek forgiveness so because of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevent them from even entering into the fire they will be among the uh, inhabitants of paradise. Then there's another level, al imanul munji min al khuludi fin nar. That this is the iman that saves a person from being in hellfire for all of eternity. They're people of faith. They're they're Muslims. They're believers. They're mu'mins. But they have their shortcomings. They have their faults. Their mistakes. Perhaps they sin. They engage in major sins and minor sins. So now they are tahta mashi'atillah. They are under the will of Allah. If Allah wants, He can still forgive them. But if Allah wants, according to His infinite justice, He can hold them accountable. And they might have to go spend uh, a term in the fire of hell. min And we seek refuge with Allah from that. But their iman will eventually save them from that as well. That iman they had in their heart will be a cause of them being taken out of hellfire and being admitted into paradise. 
So here, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he's telling Abu Dhar, anyone who has Iman will enter Jannah. Anyone who has Iman and they die upon that, they will enter into paradise. So Abu Dhar radiallahu an was shocked. And in his shock, in his amazement, he says, in zana wa in saraqa? Even if the person commits zina and steals, these are two major sins. These are two sins that actually have divinely ordained punishments attached with them. Zina, which could be fornication or adultery, unlawful sexual intercourse. And asariqa, which is a particular type of theft. So Abu Dhar radiallahu anh said that even if a person does zina and steals, قَالْ وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقَ The Prophet ﷺ says, yes, even if the person committed zina and stole. Then a second time in disbelief he says, وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقَ Even if the person did zina and stole, قَالْ وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقَ The Prophet ﷺ again said, yes, even if the person committed zina and stole. A third time he says, وَإِنْ زَنَا وَإِنْ سَرَقَ even if the person committed zina and stole, and the Prophet ﷺ for a third time said, Yes, wa in zana wa in saraqa. Even if the person committed zina and stole, ala ragmi anfi abi dharrin. Even though Abu Dhar may dislike that. All right, even though Abu Dhar may dislike that. All right, uh, this is an Arabic expression. Uh, the literal meaning of ragmu anf. Is like your nose being rubbed in the dirt, which is figurative for being humiliated, for being uh, embarrassed or disgraced. So, even if Abu Dhar dislikes that. And then Abu Dhar, whenever he would narrate this hadith, he would say, وَإِنْ رَغِبَ أَنْفُ أَبُوْ أَبِي ذَرٍ Even if, literally, even if Abu Dhar's nose were to be rubbed in the dirt. Meaning, even though Abu Dhar dislikes it. This is the ruling of Allah Ta'ala. That anyone who has Iman and passes away upon Iman will enter into paradise. Either they will enter initially, or they will enter after uh, being held accountable for their sins and acts of disobedience hadith number 27 wa an ubadah ibn as-samit radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man shahida an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh wa anna isa abdullah wa rasuluhu wa ibn amatihi wa kalimatuhu وكلمته ألقاها إلى مريم وروح من والجنة والنار حق أدخله الله الجنة على ما كان من العمل متفق عليه. From عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله عنه said, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever testifies, whoever whoever bears witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone and that he has no partner and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his slave and messenger and that Isa alayhi salam is the slave of Allah and his messenger and the son of his female servant meaning Maryam alayhi salam wa kalimatuhu and his word alqaha ila Maryam that he gave to Maryam wa ruhun min and a spirit from him and that paradise and hellfire are real. That paradise and hellfire are the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit him into paradise no matter what he has done. So again in this hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu is highlighting that iman, that faith, is what, what allows a person to attain salvation in the life of the hereafter. As long as a person is a person of Iman, as long as they are true believers, then in the life of the hereafter, they will attain salvation. And again, that salvation 
can be initially with them being admitted into paradise after judgment immediately, or it can be after a delay, after them uh, spending uh, some time in hellfire. But Iman is what grants or gives an ability to, uh, to a person to achieve salvation in the hereafter. Now in this hadith, uh, in addition to that shahada itself, uh, he highlights belief in Isa as well. So whoever testifies, whoever bears witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, he has no partner, and that Muhammad وسلم, is his last and final messenger, but they also bear witness, they also testify that Isa السلام, is the slave and servant of Allah and his messenger. And this was to uh, respond to the false belief of the Christians who claimed بالله, that he was the son of God أمتيه, and that he is the son of Maryam السلام, whom she gave birth to miraculously. And one of the reasons why he's called Kanima is because he was created by the command, by the word of Allah. And he came from the irada, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they also uh, testify and bear witness that paradise and hellfire are real. They are true. Allah will admit them into paradise despite whatever they have done. Allah will admit them into paradise regardless of what they have done. So again, to highlight the key to attaining salvation in the life of the hereafter is Iman. It is faith, it is belief. As long as a person passes away upon Iman, then they will enter into paradise. Either initially after judgment, and there's some that will even enter bighayri hisa, or they might have to uh, spend some time in hellfire and be held accountable for their sins and acts of disobedience, but then eventually because of their iman, they will be removed and taken out of hellfire and admitted into paradise. Muttafaqun alay, agreed upon. Hadith number 28. وعن عمر بن العاص رضي الله عنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقلت أبسط يمينك فلا أبايعك فبسط يمينه فقبضت يدي فقال ما لك يا عمر قلت أردت أن أشترط قال تشترط ماذا قلت أن يغفر لي قال أما علمت يا عمر أن الإسلام يهدم ما كان قبله وأن الهجرة تهدم ما كان قبلها وأن الحج يهدم ما كان قبله رواه مسلم From Amr ibn al-As رضي الله عنه said I came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and I said stretch out your right hand so that I can pledge allegiance to you so Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu an, he came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to pledge allegiance to him. That put out, stretch out your right hand so that I can pledge allegiance to you. فَبَسَطَ yamina. So the Prophet sallam stretched out his right hand. فَقَبَضْتُ yadi. So then I pulled my hand back. فَقَالْ مَا لَكَ يَا عَمْرُ So the Prophet sallam said, what's wrong with you, O Amr? You know, why did you pull your hand back? I said, I want to stipulate a condition. Before I pledge allegiance to you, I want to stipulate a condition. The Prophet said, what do you want to stipulate? I said that I be forgiven. That I would pledge allegiance to you on the condition that all of my previous sins and mistakes and faults and acts of disobedience are forgiven. قال, the Prophet said, أَمَا عَلِمْتَ يَا عَمْرُ right, Don't you know, O Amr, أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ يَهْدِنُ مَا يَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ That, O oh, Amr, don't you know that Islam erases everything that came before it. 
that Islam literally destroys and demolishes everything that came before it. When a person enters into the fold of Islam, all of their previous sins, major and minor, are wiped away. They are forgiven. وَأَنَّ الْهِجْرَةَ تَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهَا And hijrah, migrating from Mecca to Medina, especially in this context, demolishes and destroys anything that came before it. Meaning hijrah was such a virtuous act of worship that it served as a means of expiating a person's past sins. وَأَنَّ الْحَجَّ يَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ And that hajj also destroys and demolishes whatever came before it. So here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he's highlighting three very important, significant, blessed, and virtuous deeds within Islam. And that all three of these deeds become a means for a person's sins being forgiven. Number one, Islam. When a person enters into the fold of Islam, it's like they're starting over again. All of their previous sins, both major and minor, are forgiven. Hijrah, during the life of the Prophet ﷺ, before the conquest of Mecca, was a very virtuous and difficult act of worship. It was a sign of a person's iman. So through the virtue of hijrah, all of a person's previous sins would be forgiven. And hajj, of course, there are several other ahadith from the Prophet ﷺ that highlight that hajj is a means of expiation, of having one's previous sins forgiven. But when it comes to hajj, there's a discussion that the sins that are forgiven, are they just the minor sins or does it also include the major sins? And you'll find opinions uh, stating both. Some scholars say that hajj is a means for having every single sin forgiven, both major and minor. Whereas others say that no, the sins that are forgiven are the minor sins. Wallahu a'lam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Then he ends this section. Right, Imam uh, at Tibrizi, rahimahullah, right, he ends this section by saying, an Abi Huraira an. And the two hadith narrated by Abi Huraira radiallahu an, the first being, قال الله تعالى, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك. That I am the one who is most able to dispense with partnership. I am the one who is not in need at all of a partner. والآخر الكبرياء ردائي. That الكبرياء pride is my cloak. سنذكرهما. We will mention them. في باب الرياء والكبر in the chapter on ostentation and pride إن شاء الله تعالى God willing now here al uh, alama Tibrizi رحمه is saying that look if you go back to the original work مصابيح السنة by Imam al Baghawi you're going to find two more narrations from Abu Huraira one أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك and the second al كبرياء ردائي I'm rearranging it a little bit I will mention these two hadith in the chapter on riya, ostentation, showing off wal kibr and pride and arrogance, insha'Allah ta'ala, God willing. So that brings us to the end of al faslun awwal. And again, usually the ahadith in al faslun awwal are taken from al Bukhari and Muslim. Now we're starting al faslu thani, the second chapter. And usually, generally, the ahadith in the second chapter are taken from other hadith collections like Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, uh, Ibn Majah, Nasa'i, the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, the Muwatta of Imam Malik, the Sunan of Dar al-Qutni, etc. So hadith number 29, and this is a very beautiful, powerful, profound hadith that gives us a roadmap on how to make it to paradise. عن معاذ رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أخبرني بعمل يدخلني الجنة ويباعدني من النار قال لقد سألت عن, لقد سألت عن أمر عظيم 
وإنه ليسير على من يسره الله تعالى عليه تعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت ثم قال ألا أدلك على أبواب الخير الصوم جنة والصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ الماء النار وصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل ثم تلا تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع حتى بلغ يعملون ثم قال ألا أدلك برأس الأمر وعموده وذروة سنامه أو ألا أدلك برأس الأمر وعموده وذروة سنامه قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه الجهاد ثم قال ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله قلت بنا يا نبي الله فأخذ بلساني فقال كف عليك هذا فقلت يا نبي الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به قال ثكلتك أمك يا معاذ وهل يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم أو قال على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم رواه أحمد والترمذي وابن ماجة From Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu said I said Ya Rasulullah O Messenger of Allah Akhbirni bi'amal yudkhiluni al-jannata wa yuba'iduni min al-nar Inform me Tell me about a deed that will admit me into paradise and distance me from the fire. قال, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ أَمْرٍ عَظِيمٍ You have asked about a great matter. You have asked about a very great matter. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ But indeed, it is easy. For whomsoever Allah makes it easy for. تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him. وَتُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ Establish prayer. وَتُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةَ Pay zakah. وَتَسُومُ رَمَضَان Fast the month of Ramadan. وَتَحُجُّ الْبَيْتَ And perform pilgrimage of the house. ثُمَّ قَالْ Then the Prophet ﷺ said, أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ Shall I not direct you? Shall I not guide you towards the gates of goodness? As-sawmu jannah, fasting as a shield. Was-sadaqatu tutfi'u al-khati'ata kama yutfi'u al-ma'u al-nara. Charity extinguishes sins just like water extinguishes fire. Was-salatu al-rajuli fi jawfi al-layl. And the prayer of a man in the middle of the night. Thumma tala. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He recited two verses from Surah Al-Sajda, verse 16 and 17. يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ They abandoned their beds, invoking their Lord with hope and fear, and donate from what we have provided for them. No soul can imagine what delights are kept in store for them as a reward for what they used to do. ثم قال Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ألا أدلك برأس الأمر وعموده وذروة سنامه Shall I not direct you towards the head of the matter, its main pillar, and its highest part? Right, and the top of its basically hump. The word sanam is referring to the hump of an animal. Dhirwa is like the highest point, the peak, especially of a mountain. So shall I not direct you towards the head of the matter, being the most important thing, its central pillar, its most important pillar, and its peak? قُلْتُ بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I said, of course, O Messenger of Allah. قَالْ رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ The head of the matter is Islam, is submission and surrender to Allah. وَعَمُودُهُ الصَّلَاةُ And the central pillar is prayer. وَذِرْوَةُ سَنَامِهِ الْجِهَادِ And its peak is jihad. ثُمَّ قَالَ أَلَا أُخْبِرُكَ 
بِمِلَاكِ ذَلِكَ كُلِّ Shall I not inform you? I will, will give you control over all of that. Shall I not inform you of what will give you control and power over all of that? That will allow you to do all these things. قُلْتُ بَنَا يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ I said, of course, O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah. فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِ The Prophet وسلم, took hold of his tongue and said, كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا Restrain this. Right, restrain this. Control your tongue. فَقُلْتُ I then said, يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ O Prophet of Allah, وَإِنَّا لَمُؤَاخَذُونَ بِمَا نَتَكَلَّمُ بِهِ Are we going to be held accountable for what we say? قَالَ ثَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ May your mother be bereaved of you. Right, this was an Arabic expression that you say like when you're like kind of in shock from a person's statement. Like what? Like what? فَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ May your mother be bereaved of you. يَا مُعَاذَ أُمُعَاذَ وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ قَالَ عَلَى مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Right. Will anything but the harvest of your tongue throw you, uh, throw people in the fire upon their faces or sit upon their uh, noses? Right. Will anything but the harvest of their tongues throw men into hell? On their faces or on their noses. Alright, ummuk is like, I'm surprised by you asking this question. May your mother be bereaved of you. Rawahu Ahmadu wa Tirmidi wa Ibn Majah. Now again, this is a very important, a very significant hadith. Uh, we are told that Mu'adh radiallahu an he comes to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and he makes a very important significant request. That Ya Rasulullah. Tell me about one thing I can do. And through this one thing, Allah will admit me into paradise and He will keep me far away from hellfire. The Prophet said, look, you've asked about something great. You've asked about something very uh, grand. But despite it being great and perhaps even difficult, it is easy for whomsoever Allah makes it easy for. And then He gave him the formula. Gave him the roadmap. Starting with the five pillars that the most important thing to focus on. The most important thing to focus on is the five pillars. If we were to prioritize, you know, what actions are important, at the top of the list we'll find the five pillars. So the Prophet told him that, look, if you want to make it to paradise, you want to stay away from hell, then start with, تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him. Declare the testimony of faith. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Wa tuqeemu salata Establish prayer. Wa tu'ti zakata Pay zakah. Wa tasumu Ramadan. Fast the month of Ramadan. Wa tahujju al-bayta. This is the bare minimum that is required for us to make it to paradise. So we have to focus on the five pillars. Once we have perfected our five pillars, right? once we become consistent with them, ثُمَّ Then we move on to the voluntary extra deeds. And that's why the Prophet said, أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ Shall I not direct you towards the gates of goodness? You know, once you have worked on your five pillars and you've built consistency in them, then you can focus on voluntary good deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ highlighted three very important ones. As-sawmu jannatun. Fasting is a shield. It is a shield that protects us from the anger and punishment of Allah. It is a shield that protects us from falling into sins and acts of disobedience. It's a shield for our eyes and our tongues and our thoughts. Number two, sadaqah, voluntary charity. Charity extinguishes sins. It wipes away sins, just like water extinguishes fire. And that voluntary act number three, tahajjud. Salatul tahajjud, the night prayer. وَصَلَاتُ الرَّجُلِ فِي جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the prayer of a man in the middle of the night. And then the Prophet ﷺ recited these two verses from Surah Al-Sajda that highlight the virtue of tahajjud and those who pray it. تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَلِ الْمَضَاجِعِ 
they abandon their beds. They wake up in the middle of the night. يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Invoking and supplicating to their Lord with hope and fear. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ <laughs> and they donate from what we have provided for them. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ No soul can imagine what delights are kept in store for them. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As a reward for what they used to do. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, focus on the five pillars. Once you have become consistent in the five pillars, move on to these extra voluntary deeds that bring you closer and closer to Allah. Fast voluntarily, fast your Mondays and Thursdays, the three white days of the month. You know, keep all those extra voluntary fasts. Give charity as much as possible and pray to Hajjad. Then he said, Ala adulluka bi ra'sil anbi wa amudihi wa dhirwati sanami. He's like summarizing for him now. Shall I not tell you about the core, the essence of this? Its most important pillar. And its peak. I said, of course, O Messenger of Allah. So the Prophet said, Rasul Amrin Islam, the head of the matter, the core, the essence of everything, Al Islam. It is submitting and surrendering to Allah. If you submit and surrender to Allah, you will fulfill the five pillars and you will engage in voluntary good deeds. And what's going to prop up your Islam is your prayer. وَذِرْوَةُ سَنَامِهِ الْجِهَادِ In the peak, the highest form of sacrifice is jihad. Which could be al-jihad fi sabili fighting and struggling in the path of Allah, or jihad al-nafs, fighting and struggling against yourself and your nafs. ثُمَّ قَالْ Then the Prophet said, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكَ بِمِلَاكِ ذَلِكَ كُلِّ Shall I not tell you what's going to give you the ability, the control to do all of that? That if you have this quality, you'll be able to follow this advice. قُلْتُ بَلَا يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ said, of course, O Prophet of Allah. فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِ The Prophet took hold of his tongue. He said, كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا Restrain this, control it. Meaning have self-restraint, self-control. If a person has the ability to control their tongue, that means they have the ability to have self-restraint and self-control and follow the five pillars and engage in voluntary acts of worship, etc. Then Mu'adh said, Ya, O Prophet of God, are we going to be held accountable for what we say? And the Prophet said, expressed like shock and amazement and surprise, like, are you really asking that question? Is there anything other than the harvest of people's tongues that's going to throw them on their faces or on their noses into the fire? Meaning, of course, of course, we are going to be held accountable for what we say. Rawahu Ahmadu wa Tirmidhiyu wa Ibn Majah. Hadith number 30. Wa an Abi Umama radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillahi wa a'ta lillahi wa mana'a lillahi faqad istakmala al-eemana. Rawahu Abu Dawooda وَرَوَاهُ التِّرْمِذِيُّ عَنْ مُعَاذِ بْنِ أَنَسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مَعَ تَقْدِيمٍ وَتَأْخِيرٍ وَفِيهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَنَ إِيمَانَهُ From Abi Umamah رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ said, The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Whoever loves for the sake of Allah, whoever hates for the sake of Allah, whoever gives for the sake of Allah, and whoever withholds for the sake of Allah, then they have completed their faith. Rawahu Abu Dawood. The Prophet ﷺ is highlighting that having sincerity and doing these certain things for the sake of Allah are part of Iman and part of a person's completing their Iman. These are expressions of faith. That when we love someone or something, we love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for any ulterior motive. Not for any personal benefit or gain. If I love someone, I love them because they're people of Iman. I love them for the sake of Allah. If I love something, it's not for myself. 
It's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing goes for hatred. If I hate someone or something, it's because I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, not anything personal. So if I dislike a person, if I dislike an action, it's for the sake of Allah. And they give for the sake of Allah. When I give, when I donate, when I give charity, it's sincerely for the sake of Allah. It's not for showing off, for ostentation, for fame, popularity, recognition, acknowledgement. There's no ulterior motive. And I withhold for the sake of Allah. There might be instances where I should not give. And I'm not giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Then that person has completed their iman. Meaning these are actions that help complete a person's iman. And they're part of iman. وَرَوَاهُ التِّنْمِذِي Imam Tirmidhi, he also narrates this hadith. عَنْ مُعَادِ بْنِ أَنَسِ But from Mu'ad ibn Anas radiyallahu anhu. So Abu Dawood records it from Abu Umama. Tirmidhi also records it, but from a different companion, from Mu'ad ibn Anas radiyallahu an, ma'a taqdeemin wa ta'khirin. But with some, you know, moving forward and moving backwards, meaning a rearrangement. There's some rearrangement in the wording of the hadith. Wa fihi, and in that version, فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ إِيمَانَهُ That person has completed their iman. Instead of فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ iman. Hadith number 32. وَعَنْ أَبِي ذَرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمْ أَفْضَلُ الْأَعْمَالِ الْحُبُّ فِي اللَّهِ وَالْبُغْضُ فِي اللَّهِ رَوَاهُ أَبُو دَاوُودِ from Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, among the best of deeds, among the most virtuous deeds, is loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah. Rawahu Abu Dawood, narrated by Abu Dawood. Now, when we look at hadith literature, we will come across several narrations that say, Afdalu al-a'mal, Ahabul a'mal, etc. That the most beloved of deeds or the most virtuous deeds, the best deeds, and you'll find different things mentioned. These are not contradictory in any way, shape, or form. There's no contradiction going on here. Because what's understood is min afdalil a'mal, among the best of deeds. One of the best things a person can do. So among the most virtuous things a person can do, among the best deeds a person can do, Al-hubbu fillah is loving someone and loving something for the sake of Allah. Wal-bughdu fillah and hating someone or something for the sake of Allah. Hadith number 33. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْمُسْلِمُ مَنْ سَلِمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسُ عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ رَوَاهُ التِّرْمِذِيُّ وَالنَّسَائِيُّ From Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه said, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the real Muslim is one from whose tongue and hands other Muslims are safe. In this portion of the hadith, we covered it before. وَالْمُؤْمِنْ And the real true Mu'min مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسُ عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ is whom people feel safe and secure with their lives and property. All right. And the real believer is he whom men trust with their lives and their property. That is a sign of a person's iman. Because there are people who are trustworthy. And there are people that you feel safe and secure. That they're not going to harm you in any way, shape, or form. They're not going to uh, unlawfully take your life or your property. Unlawfully or unjustly. وَزَادَ الْبَيْهَقِيُّ فِي شُعَبِ الْإِيمَانِ And Imam Al-Bayhaqi, rahimahullah, he adds in his book, Shu'ab Al-Iman, بِرِوَايَةِ فَضَالَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ With the narration of Fadala. So Fadala, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ he narrates the same hadith, but with some addition. And the additional portion is, وَالْمُجَاهِدُ مَنْ جَاهَدَ نَفْسَهُ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ The mujahid, the real warrior, is the one who fights against his nafs 
in the obedience of Allah. And that is where this idea of jihadun nafs comes from. Jihadun nafs, fighting and struggling against your ego, against your soul, against your uh, desires, right? against your inner desires. And the real muhajir, the real migrant, is the one who abandons mistakes and sins. And khataya can be understood as minor sins. And dhunub here can be understood as major sins. So in this version, there's an addition of who is a real mujahid and who is a real muhajir. The real mujahid is the one who strives and struggles against his soul in the obedience of Allah. Jihad nafs Wal muhajir And the real true migrant is the one who abandons and leaves both minor and major sins. Hadith number 35 وعن أنس رضي الله عنه قال قل ما خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا قال لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا عهد له رواه البيهقي في شعب الإيمان from Anas radiyallahu anhu said that rarely did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa give us a sermon or reminder except he said there is no iman, there is no faith for the one who has no amana, for one who is not trustworthy. Wala deena, and there is no deen for the one who does not keep his covenant, who does not keep basically his promises. So from Anas radiyallahu anhi said, قَلَّمَا خَطَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وسلم, إِلَّا قَالَ Rarely did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa deliver a khutbah or deliver a sermon to us or a reminder to us except that he said the following. Meaning he would say this often. Oftentimes in his reminders, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would say, لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له. There is no iman, meaning there's a deficiency in their iman. There's something missing. A person who has no amana, a person who is not trustworthy, then there is something missing from their iman. Highlighting that amana is a part of iman. It's an expression of a person's belief in Allah and His Messenger. ولا دين. There's no deen. There's no like religiosity. لِمَنْ لَا عَهْدَ لَهُ For a person who cannot keep his covenants, who cannot keep his promises. رَوَاهُ الْبَيْهَقِيُّ فِي شُعَبٍ إِيمَانٍ And that brings us to the end of الفصل الثاني And now we have الفصل الثالث, the third section, uh, which are additional reports, a hadith found in other books of hadith that cover the same topic. That cover the same topic of Iman. عن عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من شهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله حرم الله عليه النار رواه مسلم from عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله عنه said I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying Whoever bears witness, whoever testifies that there's no ilah, there's no deity except Allah, and whoever bears witness, whoever testifies that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, حرم الله عليه النار. Allah makes the fire haram upon them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the fire unlawful for them. Now again, this can be understood in two ways unlawful for them period where they will enter into paradise immediately or khulud uh, Allah makes it unlawful for them to be in hellfire for eternity these are two ways that this can be understood so again as I mentioned the scholars they say there's different levels there's different grades of iman there's the highest level the highest grade of iman which is al-iman al-munji this is the iman that will save a person from even entering into the fire. That means a person has iman, and that iman expresses itself in their speech and behavior, 
So they obey the commandments of Allah, they stay away from His prohibitions, they may make a few mistakes here and there, but they're committed. They do repentance and tawbah, they do istighfar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit them into paradise. Some people will enter into paradise بِغَيْرِ hisab, without any hisab whatsoever. Others, hisab and yasira, they will be given a, uh, an easy accounting. But they will enter into paradise and admitted into paradise initially. There are another category of iman. There's another category of believers that they may be held accountable for their sins and acts of disobedience on the day of judgment. That after judgment, they will be sent to the fire and they will have to spend some time there. But then after spending that time, after serving their sentence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release them from the fire and admit them into paradise. And that is Al-Iman Al-Munji Min Al-Khuludi Finnar. Iman that saves a person from being in fire for eternity. So here the Prophet says, whoever declares the shahada, they declare the faith in their heart, they bear witness, they testify, there's nobody, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his last and final messenger. Allah makes the fire unlawful upon that person. Rawahu Muslimun Hadith 37 Wa an Uthman radiyallahu anhu qal Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man mata Wa huwa ya'lamu annahu la ilaha illa Allahu dakhala al-jannata Rawahu Muslimun From Uthman radiyallahu anhu said The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whoever passes away while knowing, meaning while believing, with absolute certainty that there's no ilah, there's no deity except Allah, and this includes that Muhammad is the last and final messenger, they will enter paradise. Again, either initially or after serving their sentence in hellfire. May Allah make us among those who enter fire. Uh, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who enter into paradise بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Without any hisab whatsoever رواه مسلم وعن جابر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثنتان موجبتان قال رجل يا رسول الله ما الموجبتان قال من مات يشرك بالله شيئا دخل النار وَمَنْ مَاتَ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةَ رواه مسلم From Jabir رضي الله عنه said The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said There are two things There are two qualities خَصْلَتَانِ There are two qualities مُوجِبَتَانِ That have consequences That necessitate certain things قَالَ رَجُلٌ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ so one of the companions, a man said, O Messenger of Allah, مَنْ مُجِبَتَانِ What are the two things that have consequences? What are they? قَالْ مَنْ مَاتَ يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا دَخَلَ النَّارِ Whoever passes away while associating partners with Allah while committing shirk will enter the fire. وَمَنْ مَاتَ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا And whoever passes away without associating anything with Allah, they pass away on tawheed. دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةَ They will enter into paradise. رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ We will uh, stop here for today. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have reached to hadith number 38. So in our next lesson, we will begin with hadith number 39. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort of ours. May He place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا وَمَوْلَانَ مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته